Hi right, everyone, it is July 18, 2022. It is 12.45 p.m. and it is 22 degrees Celsius. Here's Deneen Coffee Co. We're now walking south on Young Street. We just passed Temperance Street. It was very cloudy this morning. Right now it's very humid. Here's a mural, which is pretty cool because on camera, there, it looks like there's a face there, but in real life, it's just a series of rows and columns of different colored circles with different varying colors of borders. Let's see if we can go closer and maybe it'll become apparent. So there's some circles with a red outline followed by a yellow outline. When you zoom back, Looks like there's a face there, but it it looks like the face is easier to make out on the camera than it is in real life. And this one here is at Young and Adelaide Street. There's a look down west on Adelaide Street. A look down east. Here's one ten Young Street. This is a very beautiful building. There's a plaque here on the main floor. Let's take a look at what it says. It says Canada's first postage stamp. Issued April 23rd, 1851. Was, de was designed on this site by Sir Sanford Fleming. Erected by Canadian Philatelic Society, 1951. Here's a closer look at Canada's first postage stamp. Features a beaver. There's a crown on top of it. It says Canada postage, three pence. Sun's starting to come out a bit. Here's the Scotia Plaza. Big Canadian flag. Below the archway.
Here are three flags for Moore's Clothing for Men. Here's some colorful suits, or I should say blazers. This is also a nice building. It says Fair Weathers Limited, established in 1867. Looks like there's a Chipotle store coming here. And they've got a takeout window. There's one King West Hotel residence. We're now here at Young and King Street. There's a look east on King Street. There's a look north on Young Street. And a look west on King Street. Here's another unique building that stands out. This one's 67 Young Street. You can see all the fine details and the columns. On the facade. It's amazing the level of detail that some of these buildings have in their design. It also makes you wonder, how were they built so well that they can last for over a hundred years? Here's another mural. Try to get a 3D view around it. Let's go here on the other side. We're now here at Young and Wellington Street. Right now we're facing south on Young Street. There's a look west on Wellington Street. And a look east on Wellington Street. You can see the flat iron building mural in the distance.
Here's 33 Young Street, which is a very symmetrical building. Take a look to the north and look to the south. Very even. And symmetrical, of course, that goes hand in hand with the the number of the building, 33 Young Street. Two threes has a certain symmetry about it. And here's the eastern entrance into Brookfield Place. And there's a gateway newsstands. Let's go inside here today and take a look. Wow, nice and cool in here. You immediately feel the coolness of the air conditioning. Here's some hockey pucks with a wide variety of designs on them. Here's some hockey pucks with labels on them to let you know more information about them. Here's a look at the ceiling. It's pretty amazing in here. Very unique. This Tim Hortons here is the Hockey Hall of Fame Special Edition. This is the Winnipeg Jets jersey worn by Thomas Steen during one of his many seasons with the Winnipeg Jets. Here's a Calgary Flames jersey worn by Theoran Fleury throughout the 1990-1991 NHL season. Here's a look at the Tim Hortons Hockey Hall of Fame Special Edition. Tim Hortons is named after a hockey player named Tim Hortons. Here's Wayne Gretzky. There's Doug Gilmore. Here's an Edmonton Oilers jersey worn by alternate Captain Ryan Smith or Smythe during the club's first Stanley Cup final appearance since 1990. Here's a jersey worn by alternate Captain Kirk Muller throughout the 92-93 NHL season. This is a Montreal Canadiens jersey. Toronto Maple Leafs. This is us. 
This is a Toronto Maple Leaf jersey worn by netminder Curtis Joseph during the third annual Hockey Hall of Fame game played on November 10th, 2001 versus the New Jersey Devils. That's the final game puck from the Toronto Maple Leaf 6-3 victory over the New York Rangers on December 6, 2001 at Madison Square Garden in New York. Here's the base of uh, one of these pillars. That's uh, supporting the structure on the roof. Here's the fountain, which is pretty cool. Here's a root store, and here's the Hockey Hall of Fame. Says the spirit of hockey. Let's take a look at what they have in the window here. Here's a 2020 inductees. Presented by Hagar Canada. It says Hockey Hall of Fame. Here's a sign. Escalator down takes us to the Hockey Hall of Fame. Food court and shops, restrooms. Here's the Bay Wellington Tower. Here's these floors with these squares, square tiles that are see-through and lit from below. This is RBC Dominion Securities. It says Heritage Building. It's got a very imposing green door. Here's some artwork. Here's a view looking west through Brookfield Place. Here's a view looking up. Here's another green door at RBC Dominion Securities. And looking outside, we can see the sun coming up. 
Let's go downstairs, take a look at the food court. There's a Jimmy the Greek on the left side. It's a pretty big sized food court down here. So I believe upstairs was the Allen Lambert Galleria until August 26th. There's the market by Longos. Wow, look at this apple pie here. This is Longos signature half pies. This is the blueberry. Amazing. And then there's a shopper's drug mart. Here's pistol flowers and blow dry lounge. Indian food bar called Kolaba. Here's Subway, which sells sandwiches. There's Pumpernickels. And Paramount Lebanese Kitchen. Nori Asian Bistro. Oh, sorry. McDonald's. Thai Island. And Jimmy the Greek. Jimmy the Greek smells really good. Here's Piazza Mana. And we have some pizza here. How are you? Good, thank you. And there's a greenhouse juice here. We're going to go around and Go upstairs. And I'm going to take you guys toward the exit on the west side of Brookfield Place. pretty cool look down nope can't see anything there's a continuation of the artworks here's a look south 
It looks like there's a restaurant at the end of this hallway called Choto Mate. I'm going to take you guys to the west end and then come back and walk south. Take a look at Choto Mate, see what's there. Here's a quote by J.E.H. McDonald. The most important thing a painter can do is find a good place to sit. It's nice and air-conditioned in here. Everything's very clean. Here's a restaurant called, I believe it's pronounced Kai. It could be key, but I think it may be pronounced Kai. This is the entrance from inside Brookfield Place. Here's an artwork that is recognizable. And looking south, there's a TD. This is a TD Canada Trust. Looks like it's a branch, unless it's their office area. Let's go outside and take a look back inside. And then I'll take you guys back inside and show you around more on the inside. We're now here at the intersection of Wellington Street and Young Street. Or I should, sorry, I should say Bay Street. This is Bay and Wellington Street. Here's Brookfield Place. Looking east from the west side. This is a beautiful structure. Right in the middle of downtown core, right across Union Station. Royal Bank Plaza and right close to the Fairmont Royal York Hotel. Today is very humid in Toronto. As soon as I stepped back in, I felt the Nice and cold air conditioning in here. Here's a board that says Order of the Business Hall of Fame. It says the Order of the Business Hall of Fame is the highest honor of its kind in Canadian business. Each year, business leaders are nominated by their peers and chosen by an independent selection committee representing Canada's foremost business and academic institutions. This is the 41st class of companions. It's the Master of Ceremonies, Peter Mansbridge. This is Zeta Cobb. This is Gordon C. Gray. Looks like they are both the Companion of the Order of the Business Hall of Fame 2021. This is Sonia Bada. This is the founder of the Bada Shoe Museum.
This is Peter Monk. Murray B. Koffler. Here's a look outside. This is a look towards the east. This leads us to the TD Canada Trust Tower. Here is the sign, or looks like a painting that says Choto Mate. This is pretty cool, very colorful. Here it says Lefty Out There 2019. Takes us down into the shopping concourse. Let's go down and take a look. There's a printing house and Avis budget car rental. Enterprise rental car Hertz. Here we have food court and shops. Takes us back to Commerce Court where the Allen Amber Gallery and Hockey Hall of Fame are. This direction takes us to Union Station, Scotia Bank Arena, and Royal Bank Plaza. Take a look at some of these stores before we go the other way. We came from here, as you can see, the Shoppers Drug Mart in the distance. Here's a Truffet and Hill barber shop. Here's the bagel stop. Takes us into Union Station. This takes us to Royal Bank Plaza. And there's Union Station. I recently did a Union Station full walkthrough. We're now here at the east side of Union Station. The sun is out in what looks to be full effect.
I hope everyone's having a good Monday. morning was very cloudy This is Scotia Bank Arena. From the east looking west. There's CIBC Square. I want to take the time to extend a special thank you to all my subscribers and all my viewers. Thank you guys for supporting my channel. I will try my best to continue making high quality Toronto sightseeing tour videos for you. Let me know if you guys want to see what you want to see more of or what you want to see less of in the comments below that helps me keep this channel relevant there's Lakeshore Boulevard West and there's a look west on Lakeshore Boulevard West Here's a look east on Lakeshore Boulevard West. You can see the TD Towers Tower from there, from here. There we are. This area is called the South Core. Bay Street and Lakeshore Boulevard West. North of here is the Financial District. To the west is Maple Leaf Square. There's the Toronto Harbour Commission building. On the main floor, you'll find Harbour 60 Steakhouse.
There's the Weston Harbor Castle Conference Center. Here at Bay and Harbor Street. Here's a look north on Bay Street. Here's a look west on Harbor Street. Here's a colorful public art installation. There's Scotia Bank Arena in the distance there. Right there. Here's the Red Path Waterfront Festival on September 17th to 18th. It's going to be Water Weekend at Sugar Beach and HTO Park. TOWaterfrontFest.com. I'm going to look into that. Another work of art. Across the street is Harbor Square Park. There's the Weston Harbor Castle Hotel. And it's got a walkway from the hotel to the conference center. Here's a sign that says Harbor Square Park East. And over there in the distance is where you'll find the ferries that'll take you to the Toronto Highlands.
the Westin Harbor Castle lobby at One Harbor Square. And if you're driving, this is the entrance. You can just drive right up through this path here. Here's a sign from the Toronto Harbor Water Taxi. And here is Alex Alexandros, world famous Eros. There's the water limo. There's an artwork public art installation across the street. It is very humid and now it is very hot and very humid at the same time. Here's another water taxi and a couple of food trucks. We're now at Young Street and Queens Key West. We're walking north on Young Street. There's the CN Tower. far distance There's a building that says Toronto Star on it. I believe that was the, let's go across the street and take a look at the sign, the plaque in front of it, but I believe this was the headquarters of the Toronto Star at one point. I believe it was this building here. This is one Young Street. Let's see what the plaque says. There's a nice garden here. Here we are. Back reads Young Street 1796. The shortest route between the upper and lower Great Lakes lies between here and Georgian Bay. For John Graves Simcoe, Upper Canada's first Lieutenant Governor, this protected inland passage had strategic military and commercial potential. He founded York, in brackets Toronto, in 1793 then ordered a road, to, road built to replace native trails which led north to Lake Simcoe and its water links with Lake Huron. Completed on February 16, 1796, it was named after British Secretary for War Sir George Young, an expert on Roman roads. Young Street developed from a muddy, stump-riddled forest trail into the main street of Toronto and the first part of Highway 11 which now extends 1,896 kilometers to Rainy River.
Ontario Heritage Foundation and an agency of the government of Ontario. That's very cool. Which is huge. There's a poster advertising the Van Gogh exhibit, immersive Van Gogh exhibit at vangoughexhibit.ca. Here's some new camera developments. Here's a city sightseeing Toronto bus. 